Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a few minutes to discuss what's the must-have accessories for your Raspberry Pi. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey guys, real quick before we get going, I gotta give a shout out to these three gentlemen. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. All right, so a common email I get is somebody just getting into the Raspberry Pi game with their ham radio, and they'll send an email in going, hey, I know I need a Pi, uh, what else do I need to go with that? Uh, so I kind of have a almost a canned response that I send back out, uh, depending on what they want to do with it. So that'll depend a little bit on what kind of accessories you might want to get. But today I just wanted to go over a few of those. Now, if you're doing the Raspberry Pi 4, if that's one you're going to pick up, I would definitely recommend getting a case that includes a fan. Uh, you might can get away without it, but I find that the fan keeps it uh, quite a bit cooler. Now, if you're going to go with an, uh, the older Raspberry Pi, uh, they didn't tend to run as hot. But the new Pi uh, 4s do run a little bit warm, so I'd grab a case. And guys, I'll leave links to everything down in the description below, so that if you want to pick up uh, something that you see in this video, you can go down there and find a link to it. Now, another thing you're going to need is uh, a good supply of SD cards. I buy these 6, 8, 10 at a time. Uh, that's a little overkill for most people, but I would recommend picking up two of them. And the reason I say that is I like to have uh, one card in the Pi that I'm working with and then another one that just serves as my backup. So that's definitely something uh, you'll need. Like I said, I recommend a couple of them. To go along with that, you'll need something, some sort of card reader. Now this one is USB, and then we can plug in the uh, micro SD card over here on the side. This little guy will help you in a couple of ways. When you're flashing your image uh, from your Windows machine onto the card or from your Mac onto the card, you can use this. And then you can also use this same device plugged into the back of the Raspberry Pi when it's time to do a backup. Now, to go along with your Pi, you may or may not have uh, a sound card already. Uh, so you're going to need some sort of sound card interface to uh, get, your, get your audio out of your Raspberry Pi and into your radio. There's a lot of different ones on the market. It kind of depends on the way you want to go and what you want to do. One of the easiest, probably by far, to use, it's also the most expensive, is the Signalink. Uh, built-in Vox, so it's fairly easy to configure. You don't have to worry about uh, doing hardware PTT uh, or something like that. So that's probably the easiest uh, to go with. Uh, something else is a little bit less expensive. I don't think they have uh, cables out there for every particular radio. Uh, and that's the Wolfie Link sound card. So it also has built-in Vox, but I don't think it supports near the number of radios that the Signalink does. It does support my Yaesu 857, and if I remember right, these are like 60, maybe 70 bucks, so roughly half the price of a Signalink. Now, if you're really, really adventurous and you want to learn uh, a bit more about uh, hardware, uh, control from the Pi to the radio and you want to go full-blown rig control, you can look at a sound card like this. Uh, so this is just a little bitty uh, inexpensive USB sound card. I just did a video on this uh, and this particular cable. But you will need some sort of sound card interface with your Raspberry Pi. Uh, depending on what you want to do and uh, how much you're willing to learn and how much time you're willing to invest to get it set up and running, kind of depend on what you're, uh, which one you're going to choose. If I was just getting started, I think I would recommend the Signalink just for the ease of setup. Now, let's, get, uh, let's go a little bit further. That kind of covers the basics if you want to use it in your, uh, in your shack. Uh, you can just hook up a monitor, keyboard, mouse, you're ready to go. Um, kind of assuming you have those laying around. Obviously, if you don't, you're going to need to pick those up with your Pi as well. 
Uh, but what about those guys that want to go out and do uh, parks on the air activation? You want to use this uh, maybe at field day. Uh, you want to do some sort of field deployment with your pie. Well, I recommend a few more things in those cases. First, the Raspberry Pi doesn't have a real-time clock built in. So you either need to add a real-time clock or another time source if you're out in the field away from the internet. Now, when I say it doesn't have a real-time clock built in, what that means is if you shut the Pi down and you bring the Pi back up an hour later, well, it's gonna have the same time on it that it had when you shut it down unless it has a time source to update from. So when you're in the shack, that time source is the internet. When you're out in the field, you don't have an internet connection, you need something else. I highly recommend these little GPS devices. They're only about seven bucks, maybe eight. Uh, works great with a Pi, super compact, and I've had great success with these, not only uh, outside, but also indoors. And I don't have a metal roof, so that's a little bit of an advantage. Uh, but I, I have no trouble getting this guy to pick up uh, a signal and get a lock on the satellites, even when indoors. Now, something else you're gonna need if you're out in the field is you're gonna have to figure out what kind of monitor, uh, you monitor keyboard mouse setup you wanna run when you're out there. I typically run mine headless, meaning I don't have uh, anything connected to it when I'm in the field. The Pi serves up a hotspot that I can connect to, and I'll try to remember to leave a link to that video uh, right up at the top. If I forget, you can search Easy as Pi hotspot on my channel and you should be able to locate that video. But what that means is the Pi generates a hotspot and I can use another wireless device to connect to it. Uh, when I'm in the field. Now, I typically use an iPad mini. So I take the uh, iPad mini, use its wireless to connect to the Pi, and then I can see the Pi's uh, screen right on the iPad mini. And also use the keyboard on the mini uh, and move my finger around on the screen to control the mouse. And for short, quick deployments, that works pretty good with things like JS8 Call. But for something like field day, I like to go one step beyond that. And that's where I like to add almost a full-size keyboard. So this is a fold-out Bluetooth keyboard that I can lay on the table in front of the iPads and prop the iPad up so I can see the screen of the uh, Raspberry Pi. And then this connects to it over Bluetooth. Uh, and it makes it a lot uh, easier to do data input uh, with JS8 Call or FL Digi or something like that, sending emails. It's just a little bit quicker to use than the keyboard on the iPad screen. Now, something else you're gonna need to consider if you're going out into the field is how are you going to power that Raspberry Pi? So there's a couple of different options. You can uh, drag along some sort of power inverter and plug an AC uh, wall wart up into the uh, power inverter and then plug it into your Pi. Guys, I like to run things off of 12 volts when I'm in the field. So what I found was these buck converters. Now I've got a few different styles of these, but uh, basically you've got an input on this side, which is 12 volts, and then you've got two USB ports on this side. Uh, I like this one and I do use it uh, still from time to time. I like it because I could power the Pi off of one side and then maybe recharge the iPad mini or even a cell phone off of the other side. Uh, so this works really well. Something else uh, that I've done on a few of my Pis is these little bitty buck converters. I mean, these things are tiny, tiny, tiny. Uh, small enough that you can put uh, power poles off of one side and then a couple of other wires off of the other side and tuck this whole thing inside of your Pi. Just have the, uh, just have the power pole hanging out of your Pi and the other side of it would connect up to the GPIO pins. So that's another uh, kind of slick way you can do things. You can just wrap it in some heat shrink, tuck all of it up inside the uh, case of your Raspberry Pi. Either way, either one of these, it allows you to run your Pi off of 12 volts, basically. So these will drop that power down to 5 volts, something that's safe for the Pi. 
and uh, you can go ahead and just run off of the battery, leave that wall wart at the house. All right, guys, well, there you have it. That's uh, probably my top recommendations if you're just getting into the Raspberry Pi game uh, for your ham radio. It's going to depend on what you want to do. Do you want to uh, just plug it up in the shack and run from there? You're going to take the thing and go out portable with it. That's going to kind of determine what you need to go with your Pi. All right, I hope you found this one helpful. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.